Last month, Stefan Micic announced that he was returning to college wrestling for his eighth and final season of eligibility. Now he announced that he's moving up a weight, 141 pounds. Nobody expected this to be the case. Now, of course, the 141 pound field is a little bit nervous about what may happen there. But does this actually help Michigan's lineup this year? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name is Josiah, and welcome to Fanco Wrestling, your source for college wrestling news and discussion. If you're new here, I make videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you stay tuned throughout the season. And yeah, Michigan, what a lineup they have this year. Of course, there are a couple of different changes from last year to this year that I'll be going over with you, like Logan Massa, is he returning or not? Stefan Micic, back and moving up a weight, plus a couple of other lineup changes with the Amines and some other things going on that I'm excited to talk about. But first, I want to let you know that this episode in this segment is actually brought to you by the ultimate guide to the college wrestling season. Fans are loving the guide so far, but it's only going to be available for a low price of $9.99 until this upcoming Friday, November 5th. After that, the price is bumping up, so make sure you get your copy today. And Michigan projected scoring, and this is one of the things I actually dive into in the guide. Michigan has five All-Americans currently in their lineup coming back. So th- they have a few guys. Cam Amin, who last year placed seventh. Miles Amin, who plays, f- who's a four-time All-American and is going to be the fifth time, five-time All-American between him and Jaden Ironman, two five-time All-Americans this year. Pat Brucky, who didn't actually All-American at Michigan. It was actually while he was at Princeton. Stefan Micic, who has placed three times, and then Mason Paris, who, of course, made the finals at last year's NCAA championship. So that is a tough squad of All-Americans. But what about the other guys? Because that's just half their lineup, right? That's a tough half of their lineup, but that is just half of it. So the other guys, to be honest, they have a little bit of a jump to make if they want to get onto the podium, but they are a pretty tough dual meet squad, and I'll be diving into that. Their scoring projected right now is around 70 points for the NCAA championships, which puts them in that like top five out of all teams, which is super, super impressive. So what can we expect from the Michigan Wolverines this season? You can expect quite a bit, starting out with their lightweights. Their lightweights, this is where a little bit of change will come in already. It looks like Medley, Jack Medley, and Dylan Ragson are pulling a little switcheroo. This is just kind of based on some rankings that are out uh, in the ether already and, and based on kind of what it looks like for Michigan, uh, but Medley wrestled 133 pounds last year. Ragson actually wrestled 125 pounds. So let's look at Ragson, who took seventh at last year's Big Ten Championships at 125 pounds. Unfortunately, yeah, he had a run in with Spencer Lee early on. That wasn't, uh, you know, an ex- the best for him. But he did have a good win over Pat McKee in the placing round, so that was a pretty good win for him uh, for the 7th and 8th place spot. Ultimately, he didn't place at the national championships, but he did uh, end up winning a match there, he, so he went 1-2, and two, and if he does the same this year, it's still not going to like affect Michigan in a bad way, but I, I could see him doing a little bit better this year. Medley, on the other hand, he didn't qualify at 133 pounds, maybe down a weight, he'll be able to do it a little bit better. Last year, he was 7-6 and six on the season overall, hoping to improve on that this year. And then 141, of course, is Stefan Micic. And this was the crazy thing, but I want to talk to you about this is the Big Ten field. Just the Big Ten field, Nick Lee, Jaden Ironman, Dylan Duncan, Chad Red, and then Sebastian Rivera, who's kind of like right now up in the air, but looking like he's going to be wrestling 141 pounds. Oh my goodness. What an insane... Weight class, 141 pounds. And then you want to go outside of that, outside of the Big Ten, and look at a guy like potentially, I mean, Yanni at this point in the season, we're not sure if he's wrestling 41 or 49 right now. Uh, Hopefully, I'm hoping he's up at 49 just because, oh oh my goodness, if he's down at 41, that weight class is insane. Mijic has a good point to, or a good shot to do very well this year, of course, three-time All-American and NCAA finalist, an Olympian. We'll see how he does this year, but he placed third at 133 pounds back in 2019, but that was at 133. We'll see how he does bulked up, if that will actually help him, because we've seen guys like bump up. Like I remember Luke Pletcher bumped up from 33 to 41, helped out tremendously. I mean, it, just what not weight cutting does for you, but ultimately, like, does this do better for the team or worse? I mean, 
it's about the same because right now he's ranked. He was ranked number three at 33. He's ranked like number three, number four at 141. So it's really not much of a difference. The middleweights, actually, this is the part of Michigan's lineup that's going to stay relatively similar with Kanan Store, who was 9 and 6 last season, his best win over Yaya Thomas. So, Store, I mean, you talk about a win over Yaya Thomas. That's an impressive win because Yaya plays third at Nationals. He was that kind of underdog who just absolutely dominated uh, at the national championships last season. He, so it shows that he can actually beat those big guys, but he needs more of an opportunity. He went 2-2 two and two at Nationals. Maybe he can get on a streak this year. Like I mean, Yaya got on last year. Will Luan, similar situation. 9-4 and four last season. A winning record. 2-2 two and two at Nationals. And I see him being consistent throughout the year. He's in that spot right now. It'll be tough to jump up onto the podium. But he should hopefully as far as dual meets, get some consistent wins for Michigan. And at 65 is the other All-American in Cam Amin, who placed seventh at last year's uh, national championships. Now, granted, granted, I will give you this, okay? He had two medical forefoot wins. The one was over Alex Marinelli. The other was over Anthony Valencia. Okay. So that's why right now he's, like, not even in the— he's not in the Fanco Wrestling top eight— He's not, he's on number eleven on Intermat, just I guess kind of because of that, as well as I mean, he, like I don't want to say that he didn't have quality wins. He did. I mean, he'd wins over Peyton Rob. He'd wins over Joe Lee, uh, Penn State last year. Remember that one? He was the eleventh seed and he finished seventh at the championships. So he's it's possible that he does it again, but he's going to have those tough guys in his way again with Alex Marinelli, with Anthony Valencia, and you add in some other guys. I mean, it's it's going to be a difficult situation for him but luckily for Michigan the upper weights are where they really come alive no, right off the bat I'll say this it's unfortunate because Logan Massa is not coming back I, I saw some things where it's like up in the air 50-50 like whether he comes back but he's not on the roster he's not listed on the roster he just had a kid a few months ago he all american I, I don't know that he comes back if he does I mean this just boost up Michigan like potentially potentially to like a top three team but I still see promise in Max Mailer who was two and two last season so he didn't necessarily have all the opportunities as the other guys but his best win was over Jackson Turley of Rutgers and he was an All-American last year so he does show promise in the lineup where Miles Amin the at 184 pounds is actually dropping down from 197. So this is another major weight change for Michigan. Like Michich bumping up to 141 is Miles Amin dropping down to 84. Now Amin has wrestled everywhere from 74 to 97, uh, All-American at both of those weights, and placed third three years in a row. So now he's looking to make the finals. And, and he's a title threat at whatever weight he goes. I mean, if he... I mean, imagine him at 174, that'd be insane. <laughs> he doesn't want to cut down that much again. But at 197, he was a title threat. Just had that unfortunate semifinals loss. This year at 84, he's going to be a title threat again. I mean, he's a four-time All-American already. And I see a lot of trouble, but also giving so many points to Michigan. Pat Brucky at 197 is the guy who's going to be stepping in. So while Amin is dropping... Brucky at least gets to step in at 97, so that really kind of makes up for that Logan Massa loss. He wasn't an All-American at Michigan, but he did place while he was actually at Princeton, and then he transferred in the offseason. He actually spent a year at Michigan already uh, last season, but he was an All-American in 2019. He placed fourth in this year, I mean, with new training partners, with, <laughs> I mean, Miles Amin training with him every day, that's a pretty darn tough training partner to have in the room and he was already on the stand once imagine what he does with all these training partners and new competition and then of course before we get to the dual season outlook and how I think Michigan actually is going to perform in their dual meets this season let's discuss Mason Paris who's a national finalist and yeah he's had so much depth uh, to Michigan's already outstanding lineup last year's NCAA finals and he's going to have the guys gunning for him of course he it's going to be tough for him to beat Gable Stevenson who is his top I mean it's his nemesis it's his opponent it's the guy who's going to be tough to beat but the, the thing right now is he has that kind of gap between him and the rest of the field it's so funny how heavyweight works out because it's like Gable's at the top, 
and then there's a gap between him and Paris. Well, we'll see how that you know translates this year if if Paris can step it up. And then there's a little bit of a gap between Cassiope, which Cassiope seemed to have stepped up in the off season. And there's another gap. So, I mean, will heavyweight turn out the same way as it did last year? I don't know. But will Michigan's lineup? or season, dual meet season, turned out the same as last year because they have 13 duels total this season. Last year, they were 5-1. and one. A lot of their duels were canceled and or postponed or whatever you want to call it last year. 5-1, and one, their lone loss coming to Penn State, which was actually a, a pretty darn good duel. How are they going to do this season? So they start off with a few duels at the beginning of the year, which they should get pretty easy wins. They should blow some teams out. But the the real bulk of their season is in January when they will wrestle Arizona State, Ohio State, Penn State on back-to-back-to-back weekends. Now, the one thing, the one kind of caveat here is, although their schedule is tough, they're not wrestling Iowa. So they need to beat the Arizona States, the Ohio States, the Penn States, if they want to show up in the regular season rankings. I mean, Penn State is going to be their biggest hurdle. Without a doubt, their biggest hurdle. And there's going to be some back and forth down below. I'm really looking forward to the Meetich and Nick Lee match at 141 pounds now. Wasn't expecting to get that this season. Now we're going to get that, and I cannot wait to see that. But really, their upper weights, like, that's really where Penn State comes alive against most teams. That's really where they step it up because, I mean, when you have national finalists at 74 and 84 and then another na- or national champs at 74 and 84 and then national finalists at 97 and an All-American and heavyweight, that's really where they can step it up. But Michigan is also so tough up top, which makes it difficult for a Penn State matchup against Arizona State, Ohio State, and Rutgers and Minnesota even, I mean, those are going to be some tough opponents. Those duels can actually come down to heavyweight. Arizona State could come down to Paris and Schultz. Minnesota could come down to Paris and Stevenson. Oh, imagine that if it comes down to Mason Paris and Gable Stevenson. You know Gable's going to put on some entertainment, but Mason Paris isn't going to just let him let him put on a show. Now, the Big Ten is tough for a reason. Right, it's the toughest schedule in all of college wrestling. So Michigan could end up ten and three. They could end up twelve and one. They could end up thirteen and zero. I'm interested to know what you think. And and also, like I said at the beginning of this video, is if you want to get your hands on the ultimate guide to the college wrestling season, that's available. It'll be available for after Friday, but you're gonna to want to get your uh, hands on the deal at nine ninety nine. You can pick yours up right at the link there.